Dubose's first road game as head coach of the Crimson Tide. No score. First quarter, Joe Webb back to punt, but the former quarterback, current backup defensive back, Warren Faust, comes in and blocks it, and Faust celebrates. Bama would try to take advantage. Freddie Kitchens looking for Ed Sism. 7-0 Bama. Alabama's defense gave Vandy's Damian Allen all he could handle, and then some Reggie Grimes pressures Allen. Third quarter, 10-0 Bama. Kitchens goes up top, greedy for more. Corey Chavis is there to pick it off. Vandy back up on their own four-yard line. Allen to Jimmy Williams, and he's got some room. One of the few bright spots on the night for Vanderbilt, a 29-yard gain. Same drive, Vandy tries to reverse. Alabama was sniffing it out. Tavares Hogans is stopped, so is the drive. Fourth quarter, 10-0 Bama, first and goal. Sean Alexander fumbles the handoff. Gets it back, runs in for the touch. Alabama comfortably. And a reason for applause, coach. 20 to nothing in the final. The he mistakes early and often. John Hessler, for some reason, throwing in Charles Woodson's way, and he picks him off. On the next play, Brian Greasy rolls out and finds Jeremy Tooman. Wide open. Five receptions on the day for Jeremy. A career high, 126 yards, 53 yards on this one, caught from behind. Sets up a Chris Floyd touchdown, 7-0 Michigan. Meanwhile, Rick Neuhausen was in Hessler's face all day. Second quarter, Hessler hurried by the Michigan defensive line and blitzing all day, picked off by Tommy Hendricks. The next possession, Herschel Trotman goes right. In motion, Hessler throws it left. Another earful, another one-sided conversation. Michigan took a 10-0 halftime lead. Their first possession, Brian Greasy finds uh, Chris Howard in the flat. Greasy was the picture of efficiency all day. Next position, next possession, Hessler picked off by Clint Copenhaver. He returns to the Colorado 15. Hessler's third pick led to another Michigan touchdown. Michigan goes on a win. Cruz, 20 interesting intrastate rival, Temple. I mean, I guess not. After a Penn State fumble right off the bat, Stacy Mack, the halfback option of Troy Kersey, who lays out to make the great catch, would lead to a touchdown. 7-0, Temple scored 43 ticks into the game, but a little razzle-dazzle by the Nittley Nines themselves. Off the uh, reverse, Mike McQuarrie, who we spot shadow, throwing blocks to set free Chafee Fields, 14-7 lines. Now another reverse up 28-7, Nittley Nines, and it's Fields again in the open field. He is gone. 47 yards this time for the touchdown. Penn State rolls 52 to 10. Fields had 90 of Penn State's 340. Bowling Green at number nine, Ohio State. First quarter tied at three. Bowling Green kicks off to Michael Wiley, and that's not a good idea. He takes it at his goal line, goes right up the gut, 100 yards. That's the length of the field. It's a touchdown. Buckeyes lead 10-3. More special play from the special teams. Andy Pollock on the punt. Uh, that's a block. Derek Combs just smothers him. That led to another touchdown. Ohio State wins despite losing four fumbles by the final of 44 to 13. The victory was Ohio State's tough, tough day for the kickers. Punter Brian Schmitz crushed by Donnie Sprague in fourth quarter. North Carolina down three. The backup QB, Oscar Davenport, in for a struggling Chris Keldorf. Looked like a number one himself, hitting Octavius Barnes for the score. Tar Heels take the lead by four. Under six minutes to go. Fourth down for Stanford. Kevin Miller's punt. Blocked by Quentin Savage, scooped up by Antoine Black, and he runs into, into the end zone for the TD. And the Tar Heels find a way, much to the coach's delight. 28 to 17 passing game, 3 0 FSU Busby, hooking up with E.G. Green. 59 yard pass play. He gets down to the one yard line. D. Feaster would finish the job, 10 0 Knowles. Terps, their problem among them, couldn't tackle tight end Melvin Pearsall. Busby completing the Pearsall who gets some movement. Same drive again. Pearsall breaking the tackle and ends up inside the 15. Busby, 26 of 34 for 308 yards just in the first half. That's all he had to play in this game. Late second, Florida State up big. Busby hitting green. Green caught six passes for 118 yards. Again, first half numbers because where do you see the final of this game? 50 to 7. Florida State up 7-3 and driving. QB Jamie Barnett drops back. Oh. Uh-oh. Raheem Abdullah picks it up and takes off. Does Abdullah 74 yards for the score and Clemson would be up by 3-10-7. Wolfpack though would be down 3, 13-10 to the fourth we go. Barnett faking the handoff pumps and finds Torrey hold down the sideline and that's a 38-yard touchdown. 
121 left. Clemson down one, driving. Nilon Green finding Brian Walford up the middle, takes it all the way, and he's down at the five. He's excited because it's his only catch of the day, and it's a big one. With 22 seconds left, it's Matt Padgett playing hero, 20 yards out. It's good. And he got it. And Clemson with a big come from behind a victory over North Play. Catch of the game right here by San Diego State. Kevin McKechnie, the pass, the one-handed grab, catch of the game. Taj Johnson, pretty. The game, oh, all Washington. Brock Heward tying a career high with four TD passes. He loves Jerome Payton. 24-3 Washington after that play. More Heward to Payton in the fourth quarter. 29-3 Huskies. Payton was Heward's favorite target. Check out the nice leaping grab. It set up another Washington touchdown. Eight receptions, 182 yards, and two scores for Jerome Payton. USC and Washington State, John Robinson wearing the headset. He hasn't done that in 12 years. Was a good karma. Kicking off the third, R.J. Sword handling the kick for USC at the five. Here he goes, blowing right by the onrush. 95 yards for the touchdown return. And it cut the Cougars' lead at that time to 21-13, to 13, but we're tied with four and a half to go. Washington State, first and ten, Ryan Leaf. Up the middle for Kevin McKenzie, the one-handed grab. We've had a lot of those getting the block nicely from Sean McWashington, and that cleared him, and that was the difference. A 51-yard touchdown turns out to be the game winner, and the drought is over. The Cougars beating USC on the road. It's a drought that lasted 40 years. Brown stepped back, kissed himself, but the injured quarterback did not play. Second quarter, 10-0 UCLA. Jason Brown and Damon Smith sack back up Richard Walton. Fumbles, Bruins recover. One of eight Texas turnovers, six of which led to touchdowns. Then UCLA's Cade McNown went to work the very next play. He hits Skip Hicks down the sidelines. Hicks skips. Takes a tackler the final five yards for the touchdown. He also ran 22 times for 96 yards, 43-yard touchdown pass, 17-0 UCLA. Later in the second quarter, McNown, the nifty play fake, finds Mike Grebe. Touchdown, McNown's fifth touchdown pass in the first half. And that was a school record for a game. 38-0 UCLA at the half, and Texas was cannon fodder for the Bruins. 66-3. Uh, was looking forward to that Washington matchup Linda just mentioned because Dante Culpepper on the keeper nice moves 10-yard touchdown Culpepper showed in this game why he's one of the best quarterbacks in all of college football Scott Frost got things going for Nebraska finding Sheldon Jackson we're tied at seven but Culpepper finds Mark Nonsant who breaks the great run to the two-yard line in the late second quarter Sets up a Mike Grant touchdown run. Central Florida led at the half, 17-14, with the game tied at 17 in the third quarter. Corell Buckhalter scores in the 13-yard run. Nebraska leads at 24-17, and they stop the insanity and win 30. Tavian Banks took the field, and boy, did he ever. Gets the handoff, cuts outside, and he is gone. 71-yard touchdown run, 7-0 Iowa. Still first quarter, and the Banks was open late in Iowa. Oh, I hate it when people say that, but I just had to. 14-yard touchdown run, 17-0 Iowa. Late in the first quarter, Banks again. We're seeing so much of Banks, we're going to get a blender. Goes untouched, 14 yards, another touchdown. A school rush record of 314 yards. Four Cozy Ross Edge Stadium. Coletto's players showed their old coach something early and often. Billy Dickin hits Ed Watson with a nice pass, and Watson takes it all the way down to the sideline to the Fighting Irish one-yard line. Watson ran it in the next play. 7-0 Boilermakers. 14-3 Boilermakers in the second quarter when Autry Denson takes it in from 16 yards out, and it's 14-10 Purdue. Third quarter, Irish trying to get things going. Ron Paulus scrambling out in the open, and he fumbles it. Puts it on the turf after a hit by Warren Moore. Adrian Beasley scoops it up, runs it 43 yards the other way to make it 21 to 10, and it was time to celebrate as Purdue would wind up winning 28 to 17. Not a bad way as they rush the field for Joe Tiller to start off in Purdue in front of the home folks. We're embarrassed as a coaching staff. We're in Miami hosting Arizona State. The fourth quarter, ASU up 16 to six in the Orange Bowl. First and 10 at the Miami 16. Mike Martin takes the handoff. He's stripped by Michael Lawson. Nick Ward picks it up. He goes 85 yards for the score, and it gives Miami life. It gives them life, I tell you. <laughs> On the extra point attempt, six foot eight Quincy Yancey gets up there and blocks it. So it's a 16 to 12 game. Miami's going to lead, need a touchdown, not a field goal to win it. Doesn't matter. ASU wraps it up. Ryan Keeley falls down on the handoff to J.R. Redmond. They say Keeley was not down. Redmond is in for the touchdown. ASU wins 23 to 12. And his first drops back and throws to Goodson who juggles the ball, takes the hit, and still holds on. So this was a Craig Goodson production. Fourth quarter, 
12-9 Auburn, driving. Third and seven, Craig again, finds Goodson for 47 yards, down to the two. Woodson called for an excessive celebration penalty. Mm, perhaps so, but certainly not as egregious as that bad call in the Notre Dame game, which I'm just editorializing and behind on the highlights. Craig once again connects with Goodson for a 17-yard touchdown. Goodson, six grabs for 137 yards. He led off the field in the second quarter with a sprained knee and BC trailing 17-3, but they tied it up at 17 in the fourth quarter. Mike Cloud filling in Boyd the Ever. 11 yards for the score. Walker on the sideline likes it. BC up by seven, and it's Cloud again in the fourth quarter. This time takes the Matt Hasselback pitch. 66 yards for the score. Cloud rushed for 211 yards and 24 carries. BC up 31 to 17. West Virginia coming back down just a touch. 2.30 left. Mark Bulger from the shotgun. He is picked off by Markel Blount. Tom O'Brien gets his first win. And uh, got to do better than that. Don't hit him with the, with the jar. Don't the game. And Lamar Chapman gets it right up the gut. Chapman ranging to field it. Oh, he likes his space. He's looking for it, and he finds it right up the middle. And Chapman is gone. Nice move right there. 94 yards for the punt return for the score. That's a school record, by the way, and it was 7-0 Kansas State. It was 13-0 to the second we go, third and 30. Crazy play here. K-State QB Michael Bishop, look at him, avoiding two sacks. Oh. Now look at him go the other way. Still looking, looking, the scrambling, way behind the line, and throws it up for grabs, and what do you think happens? Deflected and caught by Gavin Paris. That's a 39-yard reception, and it set up a TD to make it 20-0 Wildcats, and there you see the final, but just by three, 23-20. Ohio rallied last week. In the baggy dome, second quarter, 7-6 Minnesota. 2-2 two -two Atwell. Taking the kickoff, and he's gone. 89 yards for the score, 14-6 Minnesota. Third quarter, Iowa State up, 22-21. It's Atwell again, and again, he is gone. This time, 93 yards. Minnesota would cruise to victory, 53-29, because Atwell also caught an eight-yard touchdown pass in the fourth. Okay, back to the game. Fourth quarter, Houston down four, Pittsburgh 16. Tice. Then Helton picked off by Chiffon Allen. Not Butter, but Chiffon, right, Rich? Pittsburgh <laughs> wins at 35-24. Uh, State hosting Memphis. Memphis would inflict some damage on this punt return. Oh. But sorry, Kamu got leveled <laughs> to set it up. It's about the best that Memphis could do. Michigan State owned him. Todd Schultz to a cutting across Gary Scott. Four in pursuit. Another great block at the goal line there for some retribution for the Spartan, uh, Spartans. We were up Tech, second quarter, no score. Al Clark, 22-yard touchdown pass to Sean Scales. Clark just 5 of 11 on the day. Virginia Tech leads 7 low. Fourth quarter, Syracuse down 17-3. Donovan McNabb. Tab is a Heisman candidate before the season began. Harassed all game here. Picked off by Larry Green. Led to another Tech touchdown. And Tech goes on to win 31-3. Tech will move up in the polls. They win their touchdowns. Marshall 42-17. How about this guy, Ron Dane? He weighs 262 pounds, but he can fly. He had 217 yards rushing by the half. 80 of it here. Huffing and puffing his way home. He almost gained his weight. 254 yards in Wisconsin's route. Wake Forest in East Carolina. The Pirates with a plan. Moving up in the pocket and improvising. Dan Gonzalez with the scramble to Scott Harley. Wake shot.